contradictions are about solving difficult problems. And what we've got out there in the world, particularly for business, are very simple but powerful techniques that work well on straightforward problems. Things like SWOT, PDCA, Plan Do Check Act, Sweet Spot. So when people are struggling with a problem, perhaps because they've got a contradiction, they keep using these very simple techniques and wondering why they don't work. Because more challenging problems need the right techniques. And sometimes we're confused when we actually want two things and they're in conflict, and we think we just want one. And so people who like things like sweet spot keep saying, well, let's find some point in the middle. Let's optimise, let's compromise. But when you want two things, optimising or compromising makes everything worse. So sweet spot is valid when we want to locate one thing, like the perfect midpoint on something like a cricket bat. But when we want two things, the sweet spot is taking us in the wrong direction for both solutions. So what's a sweet spot? A sweet spot is something in the middle, something that's just right, like Goldilocks, who, when faced with hot porridge and cold porridge, didn't want hot or cold, she wanted it just right. There was a perfect spot in the middle. There was a sweet spot. But for many problems, this just doesn't work. So there are two types of contradictions in trees. Technical contradictions, I come up with a bad solution, I make something better, but something else gets worse. I've got something good, something bad, but they're different things. One thing's good, something different is bad. That's a technical contradiction. With physical contradictions, I want the same thing, but in opposite states. So I want something really small and really big, but perhaps at different times or in different places. So in this cartoon, what we've got is two complete extremes. We've got a really small umbrella and a really big one. We're getting absolutely everything we want, both things, and they're absolute opposites. Of course, this umbrella doesn't exist, but that's the wonder of trees, is it makes you think about how you could get everything you want. So a sort of medium-sized umbrella is, is, is not much good because it's not very convenient for carrying about and it's not terribly good at um, covering you when, when it's raining. So what we want in TRIS is always to find the absolute best. And I hope that TRIS people will be inventing things that are a tiny umbrella that fits in your pocket and then will become huge when it's raining. So when we're looking for physical contradictions, there are two main categories. When we want opposite things at different times or opposite things in different places. And these are immensely powerful thinking tools. And once you've really got these under your belt, then you will become very good at solving contradictions because many contradictions fall into this, these two particular categories. So what we're doing with TRIS, we're not only working out how to have opposites and work out that opposites are fine and it completely opens us to all kinds of possibilities. We stop saying you can't do that because they're opposites and you can't have opposites. We say, yes, you can. We just have opposites at different times, different places. And once we see that, we become much more creative. There are some very important things in life that people are reluctant to do. Bike helmets in the UK are one example. Bike helmets are very essential to your safety. All the studies on them show that your chances of survival are like four times higher if you're wearing a bike helmet. And yet, so many cyclists aren't wearing them because they're seen as sort of geeky um, they're certainly comfortable and there's certainly no problem. So if your looks are more important than your safety, then a bike helmet has been invented, which just looks like a scarf going around your neck. Um, so apparently you're not wearing a bike helmet, but if you have a crash, it appears. So it's not there when you're just cycling along, it is there when you have some kind of impact. So this is a, an invention which is dealing with the uh, conflict of safety and vanity and ensuring that you can be cycling along looking very cool and stylish, but if you have a crash, the geeky bike helmet then does appear, appear and protect you.